Hey there YouTubers, thanks for tuning back in. This is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, dates and date formatting and how you could experience some horror story type stuff if you don't know this little trick with dates. So, um, this is actually in response to one of our uh, viewers, Claire Smith 300 says, Dan, I'm working on uh, your report uh, using code I'm saying for X is 2 to SDLR and she says uh, basically if the if the date in the cell of whatever row and the column 8 is greater than or equal to the text box date then shove it on this other report here and uh, she's having trouble with that um, I guess the um, it's not returning anything even though she knows that clearly some of these dates are greater than the date that she has in her text box. So that's a common problem and I'd like to share my response for everybody out there. Um, hopefully this will help. So as you can see here I have several dates. This one and this one are formatted in the month month slash day day slash year 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 four digit year. This one is formatted differently, obviously. It says 3rd August. doesn't reveal the year unless you look up here or click on the actual cell. It is, however, valid formatted date. Excel can read the serial number just as well as if it was formatted this way or formatted in a long string. Um, however, this, uh, this last date here is actually, um, I've put a uh, an apostrophe making this actually considered a text string. You Also, I um, just to be sure it was a text string, I hit Control-1. You can also right-click and go to Format. But I made sure that this one was formatted as text because sometimes, especially if you're importing or converting dates, uh, some of them will actually be considered text. So it looks the same, uh, although it is on the left side where text usually is and numbers and dates are usually on the right side by default but anyway so that's your first clue but whatever let's go through a little bit of the macro side of things so we're going to create a new user form really quick hit alt f11 and we're going to go to new user form right here now uh, real quickly i'm just going to scrunch this and make it a very basic user form Put a little button there and we'll name it, uh, we'll give it a caption, press me. Then we're going to put a label here, put a text box there, and let's say date. Uh, double click on the lower right hand corner to scrunch it up. And then our text box we will rename here. If you don't have the properties window, hit F4, and there it is again. With the text box selected, I'm going to say TB for text box, date. So now we have named the most essential portion here is the, the, is the uh, text box that has a date. So in the press me code, <coughs> we'll assign all the code to this button. And we'll, uh, let's go ahead and take a look, see here. Uh, okay, we have a DB, that's our database sheet. And then we have RPT, that's the report sheet. So let's declare both of those. So when this button is clicked, here's where the code comes in. So we're going to declare DB sheet as a worksheet. <coughs> Excuse me, as a worksheet, and we'll also declare that uh, our sheet is a worksheet. Then we're going to set DB sheet equal to this workbook dot sheets DB, and we're going to set our sheet equals this workbook dot sheets and that's going to be RPT is the sheet that one is so to get the last row in the database sheet is going to be D DB sheet dot cells rows dot count comma one dot end XL up and how we're getting this is actually in our beginner series, how to get the last row in um, in a in a worksheet. It's uh, it, it it looks really complicated, but I promise you out there, 
it's really not that bad once you understand what each of these things mean you can have it up and running in, in just a second so finally what we want to do is we want to take her loop um, that goes through each and every of the in, in my case there the dates are in the third column so first of all we want to have y equal to 1 because that is our starting row on our sheet the sheet that the report is going to be generated on and then we are going to say um, she said for x equals row 2 basically all the way to the database's last row and then we say next x so there's our loop quite simply so now we evaluate each each thing We're going to say if db sheet dot cells, and then we know that row x is the the thing that keeps increasing, and we know that we want to evaluate column three in this case the date column, starting on row two and moving on to whatever the last row is. So if that date is greater than or equal to uh, our text box date right there, then go ahead and write this uh, well let's put our comment there then write to report sheet so our sheet dot cells starting with row y which is the very first one comma one we want to put the dates in column one of the other sheet equals db sheet dot cells x comma three which is the date so, and then we say end if, and we have our next x. So there's pretty much all that you need. Here's the problem that she ran into, is that it was not accepting any of these, even though the, the date was clearly uh, larger. So let's analyze why that happened and what we can do about that. It's very common. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on user form 2. There's our little user form. All the code is programmed into this button. So hit F5 with me. And let's put 1 1 2011. So January 1 2011. If I click this button, oh whoops, I forgot to put a start marker. Let's put a stop marker right here. Okay, now we can open up our user form and hit F5 to, to run it. Okay, well it's running. Now let's put our date 1 1 2011. Click press me. Alright, so we see that. Uh, last row on the database sheet is 5 which is correct and the other one is empty so the last the last row is going to be 1 so y is 1 okay so here's our loop for x equals 2 all the way to we see row 5 so it's 2 to 5 so it's going to loop from here 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 and here and stop so if db sheet dot cells x comma 3 so that's this one right here x is row 2 and column 3 so uh, 1 14 2013 you notice when I hover over there it's got a nice clean beautiful date uh, but if you notice there the the text box date and pretty much anything in a text box is just that it's text so it considers it a string of text and not a number and not a date by default so uh, you see that um, when I hover over it, it has quotation marks, and this other date does not. It's formatted actually as a date. So the workaround for that, um, so it's not going to recognize that these dates, it's like comparing apples to oranges. It thinks this is a word, and these are numbers or dates. So that's why it's saying, no, we cannot understand what you're wanting. But the simple thing to do is, there's two ways that I can think of, um, and they both involve C date. So I think that I need to stop that. Okay, uh, let's double click on this and let's edit that a little bit. C date. When you type C date, it converts a text-based or whatever-based date and formats it as a nice, clean, pretty date. So that being said, let's try this again and see what it does. 
hit F5. So I'm going to say 1, 1, 2011. Click the button, and it stops right there. I'm going to hit F8 to debug through a little bit. So now we see 1, 14, 2013. And then if you hover over this, it still looks like text. If you hover over the C date portion, it, auto it automatically converts that to a nice looking date without quotes. So now we can compare apples to apples. Um, so and, and yes, all of these dates are going to be greater than 2011, so all of these should be true. So I'm going to hit F8, and so now it's going to copy this information onto the other sheet, that date. Then, let's see, the next one is uh, 8-3, yes, that's greater than that, so copy. Then, uh, again, and then finally, the fourth one, if I can move this, I can. Okay, the fourth one is formatted as text, and you'll see that if I, if I hover over that, um, it, it considers that a text string. Now sometimes it'll be a little more lenient when that date is on a worksheet. It will go ahead and compare it as if it was apples to apples. Uh, what I like to do is go ahead and convert, use the C date on the worksheet. Now, if that cell is empty, sometimes it'll throw a fit, so you may have to put some I ifs or maybe some if this date is something you know or maybe um, on error go to or on error resume next if you just don't care but typically you don't want anything blank anyways and you also don't want a bad date in there because then it'll say there's a runtime error or something but anyway that being said using C date you see how it converts that text date as well from the worksheet and then it can compare them as if they were actually dates even though they're considered text strings so that being said um, so and what it does here is it copies the text based thing to the other sheet so you're just spreading the problem unless you I guess use uh, C date when you're using the conversion process as well. So let's hit, let's double click there, and let's, uh, now that we have C date on there, 1 1 2011, press that, let's just let it do its thing, hit F5. And so now, uh, close that out here, let's look on the RPT sheet. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I see what happened there. Maybe, hopefully, some of y'all caught me there. Uh, two things I want to do. Uh, every time this condition is true, right here, we're also going to, at the very end say y equals y plus one. So the y is one initially, but we want it to go to row two. So y needs to be y plus one. So it'll go to row two. Then it'll be plus one. And it'll go to row three if its conditions are met. So that's how you increment those in a loop. So, uh, my apologies. The next thing I want to do is, let's say, at the, kind of in the beginning, I want to say me.hide. What does that do? It hides the user form so that we can click on the worksheet or it just gets it out of the way. So, me.hide or user form 2.hide would also do it because that's what me is if we're inside that user form. So, let's double click on that user form and open it up. Click the little green button or hit F5. Uh, oh, I can't click over there, can I? That's all right. I'm going to hit 1, 1, 2011, and click Press Me, and it did its thing. It says uh, it all these dates were valid. Now, let's try f let's try May 1st, 2013, and see what results we get. Let's clear this out, and uh, let's go ahead and run that again. Hit F5 here. Okay, I'm going to click it again, but I'm going to say May 1st, 2013. And so only a few of those dates are actually uh, greater than that date. So click Press Me, and it is run, and it says that only 8-3-2013 is one of the is valid. So it'll consider all these and convert them to date. Anyway, that's how to use C date. And you want to use a few techniques like that when you're working with text boxes because text boxes are just that. They take everything and make it into a text string until you do what you want with them. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped you. Claire Smith and everybody else. God bless.